One of the biggest problems we face today is self-centeredness. We're so focused on ourselves, we think by just looking after ourselves, caring for ourselves only, we become, you know, happy, rich. So self-centeredness is one of the problems we face today. They say a self-centered man is not only an unhappy man, but a sick man. But a sick man. So being self-centered does not only make you happy, it actually makes you sick. You know self-centered people, I'm sure you've seen them. You know, always taking their own pulses, their temperatures, always full of symptoms. Every sickness in the in the book, you've, they've got it. You know, anything you say you have before you say two things, they just listen to you so you could stop and then they could tell you they've got the same disease or actually what disease then you do. A self-centered person, they, they open to invite diseases unto themselves. Self-pity. They wish for nothing else but attention. Self-centeredness. I'm sure you've seen this. You have this friend who post something on, on, on social media just to exp you know, they just seek this self-pity from other people to go and oh is everything okay? You know they constantly absorbed by their own current situation any problem they have is magnetized nothing ever happens to them that is small it it's just it takes over their day their, their life they can't get into a situation and then bounce back and move on no whatever happens to them in the morning ruins the whole day ruins the whole day those are those like you have something with them they tell you no my whole day has been ruined because of something that happened something so minuscule that you would just normally walk by or let it go these are the people that they can never let anything go they hold grudges after years they they they, 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 they this is just basically how they exist without this they can't function when you engage in conversation with them they 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 like they, they are the the me too gang whatever you say oh me too it's happened to them before Whatever happened to you, oh, they've had worse. In fact, 10 times worse. When they speak with you, they're just listening, not to what you're saying, not to be uh, empathetic, just for you to stop so they can tell you how bad the same thing has happened to them. They, they are constantly enslaved by their mood, up and down. You know, for if they would just take a second, if you would just take a second and realize that everyone has one problem or the other we all in this thing together if they can sometimes just look at where they are like actually i am fortunate to be where i am today you know actually better than someone like there's someone else who would give anything to be where i am if they actually take a step and just consider how lucky they are to be actually waking up they say once you see a bright day they had lord has a plan for you for every day you wake up, it's a miracle. It's not up to you. So if you can even just focus on the win for that day of waking up, that is a win. That opens you up to different things. That's the beginning. That's the start of something. Something as small as just being having you no know, gratitude for being alive. You know, when you when you when they say when you are where you attract, when you start having gratitude, start walking towards something. You know, favors and things like that will start coming into your life. And some say uh, self-centered people are narcissists. Self-centeredness leads to closed mind. Closed mind and, and spiritual death. We human are spirit. First, the spirit, and then this reflects externally through your action. You know, they say, you know, your thoughts are your feelings, your feelings are your action. So when you're constantly in a self-pity mode, every action you take, it's reflected in it. You cannot hide what you feel from the outside. Just as they say, it is uh, axiomatic to have two negative, you know, or two opposite thoughts in your mind. It's almost impossible to have to be laughing and crying. It, it, so whenever you have this self-centeredness, your action 
this always comes across. You cannot hide it. It's like it's impossible. You can't hide it. You're subconscious. Whatever you do, you speak your eyes. When you look to the ground, that is just conveying a message to the people. So by being self-centered, you're actually just saying to the world, I am not worth anything. Don't invest in me. You can't trust in me. You can't rely on me. I am shaky. Do you ever get into that place where you have to have a conversation with someone and look them straight in the eye? A self-centered person will never do that because they're so self-absorbed. And the center of a self-centered person is me, me, me. That's what they have at the center of everything they do. They, they become drowned in their own self. Everything is now downward trajectory. You know, I am an advocate of self-growth. We should focus on growing ourselves. We should focus on growing ourselves because they say what you are attract. Work on yourself than you work on your job, they say, because what you become is what attracts. The better you are at yourself, the better you, 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 you become at your job. The better service says you'll be able to sell. But when you work on yourself, let it be just to enrich others, not at the expense of others, no. Let it be at, for you to enrich others around your friends, your family, your neighborhood, your environment. Because as, as human, everything you are now, today, or you would become is as a direct result of the services you're able to sell, your value. You are your value. We, we, we human, we simply the value of the services we provide. Of course, with the same in the eyes of God, the eyes of our family, with everything, but in the eyes of, you know, other people, workplace, we are the value we provide. That's why someone could be earning five pounds an hour and someone could be earning 50 pounds an hour. Same human being, same height, same skin color, same school, but one has worked on the services and the other has refused to. And one way to start to kill this um, demon of self-pity is to let go. Let go of self-pity, self-centeredness. Take for instance, if you are into business and you're the only one buying your own product. So you make all your product and you buy your own product. Now tell me, how long do you think you will continue to be in business for? How long will you be able? This is no rocket science. So this is what's happening whenever you become self-centered. You're producing a product, manufacturing it, labeling it, and consuming it. How long will you be able to be in business for? Another way to break out of the shackles of, of self-centeredness is to do something bigger than yourself. Help others that can't help themselves. And I don't mean, um, you know, so some people are they buy into this whole idea of sowing a seed in a religious center, in a church, you know, um, trying to buy favor from God or whatever, I don't know. Of course, you do that. Give to the needy. Give to church. But this is not what I'm talking about, doing something that's bigger than you. Reach out and help someone directly that would never be able to repay you. Not when you give to church and you expect. No. That is not involving a cost that is bigger than you. So when I when I say about self-centered, some people are so self-centered you know their self-righteousness is beyond physical you know they're so self-calculating whatever they do they as human are at the center of that you know they think it's smartness but they forgot this has robbed them the freedom and happiness which only those who consider others would understand. Only those who give would understand. Only those who help those that can't help themselves would understand. I'm not talking about giving in church or somewhere else where maybe um, you get your name called or something just to boost your own ego. No, I'm talking about doing something for someone quietly that can never repay you. That sort of happiness, that sort of freedom, 
that sort of enrichment. You can never get that from, you know, doing something or donating something so some people could, you know, hail you, you know, in such a, like, um, gravitized manner or something. I'm talking about doing something that reaches to touch the soul of another. You know, the, the problem with a self-centered person is they cannot stop for a second and take stock that all this self-pity, you know, has made them powerless. You know, it's made them powerless. You know, all this self-centeredness they've had has not made them powerful in any way or contributed to growth to their life. But instead, it's made them, it's made their life soft and weak. And we know what happens to weak uh, immune system. It's more likely to attract diseases of any kind. We also um, transpired during, uh, you know, the, the height of COVID. Most people with online illnesses are those who died first. You know, with any online weak immune system, people were rushing and having all sorts of um, um, concussions, you know, to boost their immune system. Why? Because when you have an immune system, you're susceptible to a lot of diseases. And COVID is one of them. And we all saw that. A lot of people died who had underlying um, illnesses, weak immune system. And this is what's happening to you. Whenever you become self-pity, you attract diseases. When you become self-centered, you close yourself down to progress. You exist only in your own world. Your world becomes all about you. I, as they say, there is no I in a team. They, they become full, in, uh, sorry, form instead of a force. There's no driving force. They become a form, like an empty shell. You know, a self-centered person have lost the ability to understand that growth is a two-way process. Growth is a two-way process. They say first you give before you ask, before you take. You give before you take. If you want to become friends or if you want to make friends, become friends. And someone says giving is the highest form of living. That if you've not given, then you haven't started to live. But a self-centered person has never experienced living for the rest of their life. Why? Because they've always been in a position of taking. They've never experienced the highest form of living because they've never experienced that, that happiness, that joy of being able to help someone that could never help them. And even, even the holy book says that, love thy neighbor as thyself. You know, do you know why? The reason Jesus quoted this, The reason Jesus quoted this was to bring to bring to human attention that to grow and flourish, one has to dedicate oneself to a cause which is bigger and larger than oneself. Then he says, love your neighbor as yourself. And the first, it says first to the supreme God and then second to your fellow man. They both go hand in hand. You can't do one and not the other. They are indivisible. You cannot love a man and kill his offspring. You know? How, how do you go about that? You know, I, I've been in a few places where I see people, they love going to church, dressing the best attire, you know, and, and the minute they go into church, they have all these sorts of, you know, church lives and when they come out they're hating everyone so you cannot separate yourself you cannot love you know one person no you have to have that clean mind of loving there shouldn't be two you can't exist in two places god said you cannot exist in two places you can't have the the me who's a church person and the me who he hates every other person no you know the love for your fellow man is equal to the love for self. It should exist over all dynamics in every situation. You shouldn't have a, start, a stop and start button when it comes to love, when it comes to, you know, loving your fellow man as yourself. You know, they say, they say the world between progress and stagnation is love. 
where there is love there is or where there is no love there is lack where there is no love there is lack I remember a while ago when I was in Lagos I attended a, a church a church service on Sunday and one of their motto in that church is you cannot be on a moving train and be static that is to say if you join us you're making progress because we are moving towards the direction and that was their that was their catchy phrase you know their, their motto because life is all about progress life is all about movement life is all about opening yourself to others learning from others helping others working with others as a team and just as in religion in life in everything personal development in every field is about two things love and action first the love for what you do and the action in the form of persistent communication commitment to become better than you are yesterday to beat your personal best yesterday that is what this is about love and action as in religion and life these are the two rules both in religion in in in, in christianity and in life these are the two rules on which every other rules and principle hangs on love and action and they say any man any man who is perfectly balanced between these two rules they are always among the top five percent of people in the world and it goes on to say for one for love has love has and will continue to meet every human need that's why when you show love to people they show love back to you and if not if they don't show back to you in some form or you you have peace you have freedom so even when people don't respond back to you or you are free inside but when you're a self-centered person you know what it does is it does not only keep you in one place but it ensures you are constantly looking back like you are constantly looking back into your past those who have hurt you those who have um, gossiped against you those who have wronged you those who have lied to you those you've helped and who are in a better position now and they've neglected you but the thing about life is no one gets to their destination looking back at rear view mirror while driving forward of course you know this it will you know result in crash after crash that's if you survived the first crash you know and if you've helped someone before you assisted someone before and then they become something they turn the back on you you can help another person in fact it becomes a lot easier for you to help more people now because now you understand the process and 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 when you help someone you shouldn't be waiting for them to you know repay the help because i'm sure someone else helped you as well to get to where you are and again if you remember what i said before the point of helping is not to get reward that's why i think those who go to churches and sow a seed and then wait on the lord they they have their own ways but the point of helping someone is not so you could get back from that person the point of help when you help someone you help yourself because now you're enriching yourself with some happiness some freedom attaining the highest level of living helping those who can never help themselves so therefore you shouldn't expect anything from anyone when you help them because you are here today not because you can try try to break free from life of self-centeredness i know it takes a great commitment and responsibility it takes more courage than um enlisting in the army police or and, and, and even and even in workplace because when you take that commitment to get rid of self-centeredness you become your own commander you know your own you feel martial yourself when you think you've you know straight when you fail you have yourself to answer but there's a greater cost you know the cost of not taking this step the cost of not trying to break free from this 
bondage of self-centeredness that's kept you where you are. Except if you're in a marvelous place and everything is going fine for you. Um, I am sorry. I am sorry. I'm, I'm sure you watch this commercial that comes on when you um, man, listening to maybe something on uh, YouTube and it's, it comes up like, oh, if you're not interested in this, you should click skip. Yeah, you should click skip here. Yeah, if, if, if you're in the best place, you better place and you are 100% fine with your self-centeredness, please click skip. This is not for you. Just like that, those adverts will say, this is not for you. Therefore, this is not for you. But if you want to achieve something better in your life, you want to attain a better position, where you are, you're not comfortable about it, I should say, take a step and look into yourself. And then say to yourself, what have I been doing so far that's gotten me here? Where next do I want to go? What do I need to get rid of? What baggages? What what bad habits have I acquired that I need to, you know, stop? But once you decide that you're gonna go down this route, this route, like in my friends in America, they'll say route, you know. But once you've decided you're gonna go down this route, you must be patient. You know, just like adding a yeast to bread, you know, it takes time. You don't add a yeast to bread and it rises immediately. You know, you add you know your yeast to the dough and you leave it give it time to rise it takes time or just like planting um just like planting a, a seed and every day you 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 dig up the the soil and bring out the seed like why you, you know germinated why have you not germinated no it's a process it takes time to grow but you must be consistent you must just like you plant a seed you must water it every day and then just let the lord do his work every day be committed to it be committed to grow be committed to grow i myself why do i write down the list and i'm committed to this every day even if i have nothing on my list i write number one i am committed to my goal even at that i am committed just have that commitment every day look yourself in the eye and be committed to something you can't start anything today and have the result tomorrow just like you plant seed today it doesn't germinate tomorrow or you can be like a child who gets into um a car and is like are we there yet are we there yet every five minutes you must be patient you must give yourself time to grow you must give yourself time to learn you must surround yourself with those who can help you attain a better height a better position if not you must start reading books you know books about your language your history your area of interest you must allow this to penetrate your subconscious they say first we build a habit and then a habit becomes us you must get to a place where you do this without thinking about it it becomes natural to you just like you you know you go down to the gym and you start building your muscle when you start building your muscle it, you don't see change the first day it takes time for progress to grow it takes time for your muscle to grow that's the same way it takes time for your progress to grow in wherever you start and just at the opposite of that when you stop stop hitting the gym and now you're drinking excess your 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 your, your belly or beer belly they say doesn't just pop out that first day it takes process as well gradually you stop protrude, protruding through your your your, your cloth that's what happened everything that we are today we've gotten there through progression step by step little by little you know, what self-centeredness does is it opens you up to diseases. It attracts people of, you know, like-minded people. And as I say, success attracts success. Good attracts good. Bad attracts bad. Once you start to, you know, once you start, you must continue. You must not stop because as we all know, what happens when you start something and you never finish? worry and we know what worry is in fact the greek word says worry is the meaning of worry in greek is choke it's like choking yourself so when you start something you must give it time to grow it's time to flourish no one becomes or reaches a height in a day you are where you are today not from one single stroke of luck or action it's due to long progress, dedication, discipline, persistence, and effort. At the same time, you must keep 
procrastination. You must kill procrastination, putting things off. You know, you must kill procrastination and overcome the evil power of procrastination. This is a matter of urgency. It cannot wait. You cannot put it off. You cannot be um, half-hearted about it. You cannot be. It's not for trial. You can never be in two places at the same time. The same way you can have two things in your mind at the same time, or two opposing ideas in your mind at the same time. You cannot be laughing and be smiling at the same time. So you must go into it hundred percent. This is not something you do like um, in your spare time when you have nothing else to do, when you have no um, reality TV to watch or to binge on, then you're like, oh, I'll just give an hour or two today or tomorrow. No. Personal growth is about your life. What you want to become cannot wait. You have to start today. And this requires all of you, all that you are. You cannot give it 10, 15%. You must give it more than 100% of yourself. No one, no one dies from a single, you know, a single error in workplace or whatever. No, I'm not talking about accident. Accident happens and, you know, people get run over, natural disaster, whatever. But, I mean, repeated errors. No one dies from just one, or no one gets to where they are just from one single error. You made one single error and that's it. No, is it a repeated error? or a repeated progress that has gotten you to where you are today. So to kill that self-centeredness, you have to kill that disease. It is a disease, a disease that only makes you think about yourself, a disease that only makes you think you are more important than every other person, a disease that you can never go out of your way to help every any other person, a disease that makes you think about just yourself. That is definitely a disease. Because in the first place, you didn't put yourself on this planet. So if you're trying, just like I said before, try not to be sick, not to be wishing sickness and diseases and all these symptoms onto yourself, there is just one thing. Kill the self-pity. The self-pity gives you a weak immune system. It attracts diseases, it attracts failure. Once you get rid of that, you would begin to grow. Your life will begin to change. You would begin to attract what you actually want. Success. You actually, when you start considering others, others will start considering you. It is that simple. You have to get out of that shell of thinking the world revolves around you. No one's problem is bigger than yours. You are carrying the world on your head. No. You must try to help others that can never help you. You can start that way. 